Hey guys, I'm going to do another tutorial or how to uh, related to automotive repairs slash, custom, slash customization. Um, today I'm going to be installing a set of HIDs for my truck. These are HIDs from VVME.com. They're supposed to be a pretty good brand. They are the 55 watt 5K bi-xenon. Bi-xenon means uh, that they are both high and low beams. You got to be careful when you're looking for HIDs because sometimes they'll say high slash low, which makes you think that, well, okay, it works for high and low beams, but that's not the case. It only works for low beam. Your high beam will be a standard halogen bulb that comes with it. <coughs> um, so why do you want HIDs? A lot of people may wonder. Well, normal halogen lights put off a yellowish light. The, um, the, they don't light the road as good as HIDs. Plus, the HIDs look pretty cool because you can get them in different colors. And I mean, you'll see. I'll show you before and after here. These, although I can't say these are stock halogen bulbs, these are aftermarket bulbs. So they got a little bit of a bright white bluish tint to them but I'll show you just to get, just so you can get a before and after shot I'll turn out the light here these are your the stock halogen bulbs well not stock but a little bit aftermarket a little bit brighter than your standard halogen bulbs Go outside here Sorry for the cramped quarters, but it's a little bit chilly outside, and I don't feel like working outside today, so I'll show you. So, they work pretty good. I mean, they're pretty bright, but since this is my toy truck, I don't drive it every day. It's not my daily commuter. It's more of a grocery getter than anything. I want to upgrade the lights, make them brighter, just for the effect, and obviously so I can see better. So, that's the before shot. Now, I'm going to show you how to install these. Um, the kit comes with everything that you need, at least with the uh, VVMEs. I'll unbox them again. I do have an actual unboxing video if you want to watch. I can put a link in the uh, video description if you guys are interested. Um, so I do have an actual unboxing video, so I'm not really going to take my time completely with this. But I will show you what comes with my kit and some things that you're going to want to look for with an HID kit. Because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of different brands on eBay, a lot of cheap ones that you're going to want to stay away from. So, I got these from VVME.com. I'm not paid to say that or anything, but I've heard a lot of good reviews on these. Um, also, I think DDM or something like that, or DDMM.com, they make good ones. So, let's see what comes in it. I'll show you the basic things that you're going to want to get. Um, first off, you're going to want to skip the digital slim ballast. You'll see a lot of times... People were advertised digital slim, which means this is your ballast, by the way. It's about half the size of this, and it's mainly in a plastic case. They're supposed to not be as good as these, so sometimes bigger is better, and in this case, it seems that way. Um, these are basically what fires your bulbs. Something you definitely want to get, and I would stay away from any kit that doesn't come with this. This is a relay harness. And what this does is it protects your headlight wiring. If you don't have one of these and you hook HIDs up, all the power from the HIDs is being drawn from your stock headlight harness and the switch itself. So a lot of times you can get away with that and there are problems, but if something was to go wrong or whatever, uh, you could melt your stock wiring in your car or blow your headlight switch and you don't want to go through all that trouble. So... You get one of these with it. This came stock with the kit, 
it wasn't an accessory, but some companies will charge you a little, like $10 extra or so to get this. I highly recommend getting it. It's going to save you trouble down the road. You'll be thanking me later if you have a problem. And it'll blow this fuse here instead of melting your wiring. And it just takes the strain off your headlight wiring harness. So definitely, definitely get these. Don't get any HID kits that don't come with these or don't have these as an option because they're garbage. And you just don't want to take the time to have to replace your wiring because you didn't get one of these. So uh, that comes with it. Also comes with uh, bolts for mounting your grounds or mounting your uh, grounds. These come with these little brackets, which you can mount mount your ballast in. So these bolts are are for mounting them. To secure them, you don't want to just let them lay in there because they could fly out and get caught in your belts or wheels or you know you just don't want to take the chance. And then obviously you have the HID bulbs. Sometimes they'll come with a plastic case to protect the bulb. These don't, so you definitely don't want to touch any part of this bulb. You don't want to get your fingerprints on it. That'll end up blowing it, causing problems. So keep them out of the way until you're ready to actually install them. Um, but that's it. Just two bulbs, two ballasts, the harness. That's what basically comes with it. So, I'm going to get down to it here and show you how to install it. It's pretty simple. Um, just basic tools are needed. And I will start with showing you how to do it. Your kit will come with instructions, but it's pretty self-explanatory how everything goes. When you order your kit, you're going to need to specify what size bulb you have in in your car right now, what your stock bulb is. <coughs> because the reason you need to know that is because your harness that comes with the kit has a plug that's supposed to plug into your stock harness, which I'll show you in a little bit once I get it going here. But I have 903s in my truck right now. This is Essentially, this is what the back of the 903 bulb looks like. The bulb would be out here, and then you have these three prongs sticking out the back. The factory harness has a female end that has uh, connectors that fit on here, and it just plugs right in. So, basically, you just unplug your bulb, and this plugs into only one of your harnesses. You don't need to... It doesn't come with one for the other side. It basically just sends a signal to turn your HIDs on. So let me get some gloves. <clears throat> Let's start. Tools, the tools that you're going to need are going to vary by your car and what size the battery post uh, terminal bolts are and Things like that, what size bolt you're going to use to mount the ground on your frame somewhere. So, you're just going to have to see what size. I can't really give you specifications on what exact tools you're going to need. I'm using, using this bolt here to mount it to the chassis ground. And I'm using a half inch and a 13 millimeter wrench to get on both ends of that and for my battery I have a 14 millimeter wrench I also have some wire cutters crimpers and then I've got a little flashlight and I also have obviously the mechanics uh, drop light there hanging up to illuminate everything so first thing you're going to want to do is get your old bulbs out now, in the case of mine, there's a little clip which you got to push in and then move up and it just kind of swings out on a hinge and the bulb pops right out. So, you may have to remove your battery or uh, unhook it from the hold down just to make it easier to get in there. stock bulb out 
And here you can see, here's the old stock bulb. You can see how it's got the three prong connectors on it, just like the harness does. So, these are made in Germany. I have no idea what kind they are, um, but they are aftermarket and they, they were pretty nice for what they were. But it's time to get something a little different, a little, something that'll stand out a little more. And by the way, if you plan on keeping these or reusing these, um, you also don't want to touch the bulb. I'm wearing gloves, so it doesn't matter. But you don't want to get your finger oils or anything like that on the bulb because that could cause it to blow. And obviously, you're going to want to put it in a safe place. So, I got that one out. Now, I'm going to grab one of the HIDs and put in its place. Remember not to touch the uh, bulb or the lens or anything like that. And this one actually has some prongs on it which have to go in a certain way. So it's a matter of matching it up to see which ones go which way. Basically, you just spin it until you get it in the right way. And these can be a bugger sometimes. just a matter of reinstalling the uh, little spring or little metal cap that holds it. So I'll show you what an installed one looks like on mine in a bit and I'll show you the old harness. Show you that. Just so you get an idea of how how this mounts actually. So, so there we have the new HID mounted, and you can see that metal spring clip up on the about the two three o'clock position. That you just push in and move, and then there is the old harness. And then you got the new one that comes off out the back of the HID. So basically just repeat this with the other side. I like to get my HIDs installed first. That way they're installed, they're in a nice safe place where they won't get dropped or your dog won't eat them or something like that. So I always like to install them first just to get them out of the way. So then we go over to the other side and do the same thing. So. <clears throat> this one's a little bit easier because it's a little more open. Basically just push the release in and move it out of the way. Bulb pulls out. And stock bulb is out. HID goes in. take out most of the time than they are to get in. <laughs> Def 
definitely a lot easier than that. Put back in there. May not be the case with yours. It's just mine has these uh, three prongs on the ball holder that have to be lined up just right, or you'll get problems with it. Maybe not. Making some progress. Sorry about that, guys. And make sure they're mounted in the same, they should both be facing the same direction. So. Got the bulbs in, that's about the hardest part, probably. <laughs> so, next, you want to remove your ballast and get them out. Also, when you're buying them, make sure that they're waterproof. They should all be, obviously, waterproof, but this has a blue protective cover. Just peel it off. Basically, this goes to your HIDs. These go to your HIDs, and then your relay harness plugs into here. So, since these have the brackets, I'm going to try. I'll figure out where to mount them after I see how much length of wire I have. That's something you may want to do too. So, just for the sake of seeing how much wire I have to work with, I'm going to unravel this. Relay harness here. Let's see what we got. Okay. These plugs go to the ballast. And that one goes to the ballast as well. So. This goes to the battery. So, you're going to want to mount the one that goes to the battery. Since it's not very long in my case, you're going to want to mount that on the side of the battery. So, I automatically know that this could be towards the battery. 
this will be towards the battery and this one will be towards the battery with the ground so and this one's going to have to extend over to the driver's side so I'll just throw that over there and I'm going to start plugging things in hooking things up So, this goes plugged into the stock harness on the passenger side in my vehicle. It could be the driver's side on yours. So basically, you just match up the tabs and it gets plugged right in. Just like that. And then, the HIDs get plugged into pretty much just match all the connectors up if you're not sure read your manual the big plug gets plugged into the ballast that's obviously a ground which I'm going to use an existing spot on my car or on my truck to there's already a hole there I'm just going to Get some of the paint off, get it cleaned up, and then that should just plug right in. So, then we get the ballast for one side. And you plug everything up into that. Make sure the connectors are good and tight and that they clip and click on so show you this and how they're on here you can see the stock connector right there with the red uh, wire crimp on connector is plugged into the harness for the relay and that these two connections here from the bulb are plugged into the ballast there and then you got this other wire which gets plugged in which goes into the relay and finally for this side this big yellow connector here gets plugged into the ballast so I'll do that now Basically, this gets plugged into the ballast here, and all your connections for this side, minus the power and ground, are done. So, looks like I'll have enough length of wire possible to mount my ballast on the fender well there where I want to. So, we'll go do the other side, get that side taken care of. Basically, it's just the same with the other side. Except you won't have the power and ground connections for this side. So, you want to make sure when you run your wires over this side that you run them somewhere that's out of the way where they won't get caught in any moving parts or 
away from any hot components, exhaust, things like that. So I'm gonna try. What I'll do is I'll just run mine right over the top of the radiator shroud here and then just zip tie it onto the onto something here. That way it stays away from the fan, everything else. Um, but I'll get that all taken care of once I get everything wired up because I want to see how much length of wire I have to play with. That's another thing. Some of the cheaper kits, I mean obviously any company they're gonna want to give you the minimal amount of wire because it saves them money in the long run then it makes your install harder it makes it harder to put things where you want to so you kinda gotta get everything hooked up first I think and just see how much wire you have to play with see how much slack you have and then start figuring where you want to mount things because if you go ahead and say okay I'll mount the ballast there on the fender well and drill the holes and take the time to do all that and then you realize, well, I don't have enough wire. Then you either got to extend the wire or, you know, you just wasted your time and you got to mount it somewhere else. So. Ballast is plugged into the bulb. Make sure they click on. extends over here. The small wire goes to the small plug. And then this side does have a ground on it as well. So I may have lied to you. Yeah, there's uh both ends do have a ground then, so it's just the, the left side on my case that gets the power, but they both get a ground, so I'm going to need two of those bolts, and I'm going to need to clean two areas up on my fender well where I'm going to ground them at. So. see the lack of length of wires already starting to get in the way a little bit. I wanted to mount it back there but I'm not quite sure it'll be able to. Now that I got my plug on this side and everything hooked up, I can move my battery back into position because that is going to determine where I mount everything. So battery back. And now I can start to really see the length of wires and it is a it is a mess of wires it really is fortunately that's just the way it is I believe I may actually change my mounting location from where I wanted it to be just because it'll make it a little bit easier Battery. This will reach over there. So. 
Alright, I think I know how I'm going to do it. Um, so you're going to want to get a good ground spot that will reach within where the wires are. And basically, you want to just sand that ground spot down with a piece of sandpaper or grinding wheel or something like that. I'm going to use this stock location because there's already a hole here and I've got a bolt that will fit through just fine. So, less drilling, less work is always good. So you want to get a piece of pretty coarse sandpaper and sand away the paint. You want to have a nice bare metal spot for the ground to hook up to. Because with any ground, the cleaner it is, the better the ground will be. The less problems you'll have down the road. So right here's the spot. I'm going to take some sandpaper. Yes, it is a lot of rust in here because this truck is 28 years old and came from New Jersey. A lot of people know a lot of salt water affects these cars, so it's not good for it. Sandpaper should work for you, but with this truck, there's a lot of rust, so I'm gonna speed up the process. And always within any power tools you use, you're always going to want to have a good pair of safety glasses or even a face shield. Yeah, it may look goofy, but you look even more goofy without an eye or a glass eye. So, no offense to anybody that has a glass eye or anything like that, but just stating my point. So I'm going to use this and just grind away the metal. Speed up the process a little bit. that's good. I'll pull it on. And I'm going to need to drill out these connectors because they are not big enough to fit 
through this pulp. So, now I need a more small one. Okay, I've actually found a smaller bolt that'll work, so I'll just use these for the ground. That way I don't have to expand the size of it. That'll fit through just fine. So I actually found some washers too. So also another limitation to where you mount the ballast is the length of these grounds. As you can see, they're not very long. So obviously the ballast is gonna have to mount somewhere close by the ground. So you can always extend it if if you can't absolutely find any other place to mount it. And that'll work just good too. But. So, take your washer, your bolt. Ain't gonna work. Done it.
Fuck this. Basically what you want to do next is try to drill it out and destroy your wire, like I just did. And here's where the wire cutter come in handy. Cut. Cut this loop. This is turning out to be, huh? Can't cut the fucker.
your ground's nice and tight.
Then basically you just want to mount the, once you get your grounds hooked up, you want to take your power wire and then mount it to the battery. It's nice and tight. Get away from all objects that get hot. Like and then you're ready to test them out. Always like to test them out before I mount the ballast where I'm going to mount them. These take a little bit to warm up, so they won't be at the brightest when they first come in. So there you go. You can definitely see how much more brighter these are than the other ones. Turn off the shop light. And this is just on low beam right now. Makes a nice bright white light. These are the 5Ks. It almost looks blue on the camera, but I can assure you these are just white. What the fuck on the high beam so you can see what they look like. There's the highs. Hard to see in this cramped in area, but they, they will really look nice on the road. You can actually hear the motors. There's little motors in the bulbs that move a shield for high and low beam. There they are. So now that you're sure that everything's working, you want to get your ballast mounted up somewhere. And you clean up the wiring and you're finished your installation.